You know, what I want to do is I want to actually show you a mindset. All right. I want you to listen to me. You really truly have to listen to me very closely because we're going to find out how deep in your heart does integrity run. And if you really truly comprehend what's taking place and what's going on, let's use the United States of America, for instance. OK. All right. Since um, 9-11, uh, when they told us that it was a terrorist attack, and since then we have used it to not only um, erode the civil liberties of Americans in this country, but we also have used it as a prelude to commit terrorism all across this world. You see, here in the United States of America, uh, we're totally oblivious. We only get to see what the mainstream news media reports to us. We're totally oblivious of all the death, the hell, the carnage, and the collateral damage that we have done in destroying lives. You know, um, we can take a drone and blow up what we call a known terrorist and thank God that we got the terrorist um, and have no care whatsoever at all that we just got finished killing a mother and two children, uh, that we just got finished killing a whole plethora of innocent civilians. We sit over here across this pond being totally oblivious to all the hell that the United States of America is causing all across this world and all the lives that they are destroyed and the literal maiming of whole entire populations and civilizations. And we sit over here in our sealed homes. Uh, we sit over here uh, with our iPods, our computers, our Xboxes, our Playstations, our NFL and basketball and baseball uh, as if that, that we um, are in some type of utopia or something and being totally oblivious to the facts of what's really truly going on. That's the reason why America, regardless of what you may think and regardless of what these people are reporting to us, we are a very despised and hated country all across this world. Now with that groundwork being laid, I want you to see something right here. I, just the other day, yesterday, I came across, um, I think his name is Kwame X and another guy on what they call Fox Face Off. And they're speaking on issues. And of course, what they're speaking about in this particular instance right here is white lives matter in the protest. Now, when somebody allegedly attacks the United States of America, and I say allegedly because we don't know if the allegations are true because our government lies to us. But when somebody allegedly attacks the United States of America, what does America do? Do we turn to the cheek? Do we turn to the cheek? Do we pray to God and ask um, uh, that we can come together and, and have forgiveness? Or do we answer by force? You need to ask yourself that question. Also, if someone was to turn around and do some type of harm to your family, what is your doctrine? What is your theology? What is your perspective? Do you turn to the cheek? Or will you defend your family and do it by whatever necessary force you deem worthy? Well, we have an attitude in this country, um, a bad attitude in this country. I want to show you something. There's a movie out some time ago called Zulu. And of course, uh, uh, Shaka was the king of the Zulu nation. The Europeans came down and befriended him because they loved the resources. They loved... Um, the countryside and um, and of course you know Zulu is very skeptical about these particular Europeans because um, he could discern some treachery and some deceit in them well anyway um, once the Europeans got away from Shaka Zulu and they went around their own counterparts what they were doing the whole entire time was planning to undermine and to literally take the lands of Shaka Zulu, which we better know today as South Africa. Um, but they wasn't, they was not communicating that to Shaka, okay? And um, what had happened was, is that there a conflict arise, all right? And the whites actually decided that they were going to um, use some lethal force um, against a nation, um, and they did. Now, here we are today. Listen to me very carefully. What is this attitude when you can do something wrong that now all of a sudden 
when you retaliate and when you respond to someone who is wronging you and doing you wrong, all of a sudden we have to exercise physical restraint. Uh, let's let cooler heads prevail. Uh, that is not the answer. Um, you know, all, all this type of bizarre behavior takes place. And it, and it only happens whenever you have, for instance, um, if you tear up my mailbox, then, and I see you on video camera, or if you um, harm someone in my little tribe, my little camp, I'm supposed to just, uh, according to the police, according to the government, I'm supposed to let them take care of it. I'm supposed to let cooler heads prevail. And what they're really truly saying is I should not meet with force what they're doing. Well, in this particular interview right here, you have this Kwame X, and I agree with him 100%. First of all, you've got these cowards protesting with their Confederate flags waving. Um, and they did have guns in the protest. It's just that people chose not to see them. Um, and, you, and you know what's amazing about it is they pick a time during the day to actually do a protest when they knew that the black people was going to be in church and the organization itself because it's obvious that they had to go to the government and get what they will call a license to protest because the government was there to protect them and it's also clearly seen that the government was prepared because they had plenty of police officers there they even had barricades while they shouting on one side other people shouting on the other side now, what's racist about all this is, is that these whites, these white racists chose to go into a black neighborhood in front of a historical black building, institution, and to make their statement and feelings known. Now, if I or you or somebody like it of this color, if we chose to go in front of a KKK lodge and do that, are you following me? First thing, we'd probably be denied. The second thing is you will see a greater show of force than what you ever seen. You see, this is what people don't understand. I understand what this Kwame X is saying, that if we would have known that they would have been there to protest, we would have met them, and I agree with him 100%. Because I'm telling you right now, we live in a world without rule of law, and that's quickly being established right now. And I know that I'm surrounded by enemies. I am not going to wait for the enemy to come to my front gate, the, to the front of my mailbox to bring the fight to me. That is stupid as hell, especially when you know you have known enemies. See, I think the theology of Christianity has done screwed up many of you people's heads. I really truly do. I think that it's all messed up. But I think what I'm trying more than anything to draw here is this. Why is it that it's, how is it that it's okay for someone to perpetuate evil, do evil, and when they do that, and even if they show that type of aggression, the ones that is having the evil done against them, we're supposed to exercise restraint, we're supposed to just let cooler heads prevail, how about if these bastards just don't do it at all, and then that way you don't have to incite a response with me. Am I off my rocker? Am I out of my mind for thinking like that? I don't believe so. I don't think that I am at all. I'm telling everybody right now, I am a very peaceful man. And like I said, they may be my enemies. Whoever you may be, I don't care who you are. I don't have an enemy in the world. But I promise you, if you want to be my enemy, I will be the best damn enemy you have ever met in your life. I will promise you that. What have I just got finished saying? Did I just got finished? Did I just finish saying that that I'm actually going to go out there and start evil with someone? No, I didn't say that. I said that if someone is going to come and infringe on my rights and my space, if someone is even intended on doing some harm, um, because you know cowards they usually do it in a soft form. They do it, um, you know, when you ain't around. Just like these protesters, they protest. They pick the time to protest when they knew that they wasn't not going to be met with a lot of public resistance. Um, but it's just utterly amazing. I don't know what this attitude is of you come and do evil to me 
and then the government and all everybody else says that we shouldn't retaliate. See, that's that's the problem that we're having today and the reason why people don't understand. That's the reason why when somebody gets shot, especially a black man in this country, when he gets shot, and you see these people go out and tan the hell out of these damn cities and, and tan up businesses and buildings and stuff. I know what other people say. Oh, we don't think they should do that and stuff, but you ain't in their feet and you ain't in their, shoe, and you're in their shoes. And you know what? What you think is totally irrelevant because it's not stopping the places from being towed up. The reason why they're being towed up is because they can't get their voices heard. They're constantly being taken advantage of. And for some reason, the system can't see that. So they don't care what the system thinks. So when you go out there and you kill, and I say it's the system. I've always think, thought it was the system. Most people say white cop, black cop, but I'm telling you, it's a system. It's a system. All right? And when you have a system of what many people have determined and defi have defined as white supremacy, racism, many people are being affected in their minds and stuff, the people, the people are ultimately going to answer. They're going to answer, and they're going to answer their way because, just like in Baltimore, they couldn't get a damn thing heard. No matter how many times they may petition, no matter how many times they've done things the way that the system said they should do it, they couldn't get it heard. But when they tore that damn place up, all of a sudden, now we want to come to the table. Now, all of a sudden, we need to talk. Now, all of a sudden, we need police reforms. Now, all of a sudden, uh, the evidence has come out by the DOJ that the Baltimore Police Department is corrupt to the core. But unless they taught the city, taught the town, and taught businesses, unless they had a, a very serious response, just like the United States of America does, they would have never, ever been taken seriously. They would have never, ever, ever been taken, taken um, as they mean business. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't either. And now, now all of a sudden changes are allegedly in the atmosphere, which I'm not holding my breath. I don't believe it at all. Because people know how to get up in front of these cameras and politically grandstand and stage play in order to diffuse the matter and make you think. Because, again, you know, you're dealing with benevolent people who have had nothing but evil. I've often said, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times. Let me get history right here for a moment. My people were taken from our homeland as slaves. What did we do to the people who kept, who called us, who, who uh, enslaved us? That's question number one. And then we were beaten. Our women were raped. Our men were sodomized. Our men were killed, thrown over the boat. I can go on and on and on and on. We was robbed of our culture. Our language, our heritage, made to forget who we were. It was forbidden if we if 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 any one of us ever got caught knowing how to read, it was the death penalty. We were put out in the fields, the cotton fields, and we had our foots chopped off for trying to want to be set free. Wouldn't you not want to be set free? We build this nation. And this industry based upon the cotton trade because of the free labor. Um, we was promised 40 acres and a mule. Never did get that. Uh, most people think that slavery has ended. I don't see it. I don't think it's ended at all. Uh, you mean the chains physically on us is ended, but the chains that's up here, that hasn't ended. And in all this, you get certain heroes that raise up like Nat Turner that wants justice for his people and all of a sudden they're called vigilantes. Uh, they are insanely out of their mind because they want to be free. What is that? Now, put the shoe on the other foot. I don't care what culture you are. I don't care what color you are. Put the shoe on the other foot and ask yourself, would you not have responded the same way? I mean... Can you imagine having your wife taken away from you and two or three of these um, slave owners take her into the big house and rape her immersely and then throw her back to you? Can you imagine what that does psychologically to someone? See, the problem is, is that history is very painful and people do not want to be, uh, look at this, reminded of the realities of what they want to do is turn the page and forget about it. How can you forget about it when there's never been closure? I'll give you some more examples, okay? Fair and balanced, right? 
during the Jewish Holocaust. We didn't have anything to do with it. America had nothing to do with the Jewish Holocaust, yet we give them reparation closure. And they still get it even till today to the tune of 15 or 20 trillion, no, 20 billion dollars or even more. Now, that's not including national defense support. They get all that today from America. The Ger I mean the Germans, can you imagine? The Japanese. Man, we give that with the country America gave them reparations. And then when it come come time for the blacks, where you ought to thank God that you just been free. You ought to thank God that no closure at all. Nothing at all. No 40 acres, no mule. No money to even get started. Even when you were so-called legend set free, you had to go back into slavery again because you didn't have anything. You just throw it out on the street. And then America wondered why that blacks respond the way they respond. Are you serious? See, that's why I say everybody's experience is different. I don't expect the majority. I didn't say all of them. I said I don't expect the majority of the white people in this country to understand my plight or the plight of my people. I don't I don't expect for you to because most of you are just totally out of touch, especially when you have had privilege. What y'all do, many of you, is type in Tim Weiss, W-I-S-E. Type in Tim Weiss. Punch it in on his computer and go and get educated. Tim Weiss, he's, he lives down here in Nashville. He's a national spokesperson. Uh, and he speaks on issues like this because what he's trying to do is bring the attention. So I've had my family, my people have had all these evils perpetuated against them. And we're not supposed to defend ourselves. We're not supposed to retaliate. And if we do, all of a sudden we're out of control. All of a sudden we have lost our mind. All of a sudden, I mean, how about if evil don't come my way, you don't have to worry about my response. And when you look at this interview, the white interviewer right here, you're going to see the type of attitude that America has still towards black people today. Let me see. You go on protest, actually agitating and starting a fight in front of a historic black organization. Mind you, I might say that was actually started by white people, NAACP. And you're going to tell this man that's sitting across from you that he is wrong for wanting to go down there and meet these people. What is that? Now, somebody tell me what is that? I can't, I don't understand it. I still don't understand it till today. Do you understand it? I don't get it. Never have got it. Never will get it. I even try my best to understand that mindset and I still can't understand that mindset because in function, I do not see America practicing the very same principles that they are demanding on others. I don't see it. Don't see it. Don't get it. So I would love I don't care who you are. I would love for somebody to sit down and have a very civil, intelligent conversation with me and to try to help me understand why we shouldn't be responding when we have had so much evil and injustices against us and has never, ever, ever, ever been any closure at all in this country. That's my side. It's my perspective. Now, you don't see me out here responding like a lot of people. No, I'm, I haven't lived my life crying and belly aching at all. I have not done that. I have not lived my life crying and belly aching because of the injustices that has gone on with us. And I understand that conscious too. I have not sit and waited for a handout. I have put these hands right here, which you see them big, deep yellow calluses on, and they look rough as I don't know what these hands does. I have literally put my hand to the plow. I have. When I started this community, and stuff, I didn't depend on people. Will people help you? Yeah, they will if they get it. But I have not cried over spilled milk. And you still don't see me crying over spilled milk. I continue to keep advancing and going forward. But I understand uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name right, Kwame X or whatever. I understand his side, but I def I just don't understand the white man's side in this interview. I want you to look at it. Check this out.
this past weekend in Third Ward, Houston, at the headquarters of the NAACP. The oldest black organization is fighting for the civil rights of black people in America was under attack by those quote unquote white supremacists and racist standing out in front of the NWC headquarters with protest banners reading white lives matter with Confederate flags, bulletproof vests and guns. Well, you didn't have any guns. Well, they had guns, yes. Go they, back and look at it. They didn't have Two guns. of them had assault rifles, yes. No. Our people showed up, Matt, and they were there with assault rifles. Go ahead with the story. Let me speak further. Go ahead. But what I want to say is this to the NAACP. You knew they were coming, but you didn't tell the rest of the community. They had a duty to inform us that these racists were coming into our neighborhoods and let us know where they were going to be, if they're going to be in front of their headquarters and they knew about it. To those racists of White Lives Matter, you're blessed because had we had known that you were coming, we sure as hell would have met you right out there. See, why in, the, why in the hell would you have done something like that? You know, it isn't White Lives Matter. It isn't Black Lives Matter. It's all lives matter. You got red blood. I got red blood into that organization, White Lives Matter. Uh, th that's not what you do. I don't, I don't know what kind of example you are, but you're certainly not an example of me. We are all together in this. this. Your skin color doesn't make any difference. We come together as men and women. Our blood is red and we do the best thing. But Matt, it is a factual history that when white men have come into the black community with guns and Confederate flags, we wind up hanging from trees, dead in ditches, and disappear, never seen or heard from again. So for the fact that these white racist men with this slogan of 14 words, which is from a white supremacist website, came into our neighborhood in Third Ward, I guarantee you, and if you know what? Ever do it again? If they ever do what, it again, what are you going to start a riot? And we know about it. Start a riot. We will meet them there. And let me tell you something: them guns you bought, we got why, bigger why, and better guns than you it, do. Why, why is this making Come you so again, angry? and we will deal with don't, them. Don't let this upset you because that's exactly what they're going for. It's the same thing that Black Lives Matter organizations try to do to white people. They try to get us all angry so that somehow we do something Black wrong. Lives don't let Matter that happen. has never come to your neighborhood with Confederate flags and guns in your neighborhoods. How in the hell are you going to compare them to that? These racists have murdered black people still to this day. And you're going to come in our neighborhood with Confederate flags and well, guns? let me tell you something. Oh, no, baby. Next time you come, I guarantee you, we'll deal with you like we're supposed and to. And that's exactly what everybody would like. You know, these organizations would like to start a fight. It's the same thing with Black Lives Matter. They want to start something. It's all lives matter, Quanell. And that's what you well, and I have been talking what, about. guess what, though? You white, lives, you white Lives Matter supremacists come again with your guns? You're going to sure as hell get you a fight, too. Now, will somebody please tell me where was that black man wrong in that response? And why is that not the answer since he didn't instigate, since he didn't even think about actually, I mean, think about that. I don't, look, I live in a white town, okay? 99% white, all right? Well, I'm going to say 98, 97% white, maybe 3%. Mexican and point point zero 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 one black okay and um I do not go out here instigating I do not go out here agitating the white people in this county I don't um when I go to town I mean I feel like a celebrity um an unapproachable celebrity because I see people cutting their eyes people pointing their fingers they're looking at me they're watching me and 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 um I, even the police do it they all they just sit there and look at me and as if I'm going to do something. I don't know what they're expecting, but that's what I deal with every day. Now, it don't bother me at all. It, it tr The reason why it don't bother me because I don't give a damn about what people think, especially if you are not in my community and you are not an Israelite and you're not following me as I follow Christ up here. I don't care one bit about what you think. Live your life. Go ahead and be at peace. But how about if I just get all the straight way together and the ministry? And the very next time, the very next time I even see another swastika painted on the bridge or on my mailbox up here or my neighbor up here, my neighbor, I got white neighbors up here that constantly get harassed by this dumb tomfoolery of uh, Confederate flying racism. How about the next time I get, I, I, I put out an a, a, a APB. Now I will call it an APB because all I have to do 
is just make one phone call and I can have 300 black people in this county in less than eight hours. One phone call, I could. And how about I just go up here and start showing Black Lives Matter shirts and we start marching around the county and everything and, and, and holding our fists up in the, in the air and carrying our AR-15s and our Glocks and everything else we got with us to make sure that we are protected not only from the citizens in this county, but from the police in this county. How about if I go do that? Would that be all right? Will that be all right? Now, if it's not equally all right to me, and you don't think I should be stoking the flames or stoking the fires, then why is it or how is it all right for somebody else to do it against me or against the black community itself? This is what I'm talking about. And people talking about they want to come and sit down at the table and talk when they don't have no answers. You see, I said it once and said it a thousand times. Black people today ain't going back in no more slavery. They're going to die before they do that. And black people today are not going to have no more whips, no more fire hoses, no more chains. No, they ain't. No more ropes around their neck. This is a new generation. And this is a new breed of people right here. And they ain't having it. They are not having it in any way, shape, fashion, and form. So, no, I cannot get with the white man's philosophy in this interview at all. Now, somebody, I, I'm trying to have a civil, intelligent Dialogue. Somebody tell me. I want to know where I'm wrong. Make a video response. And I'll include it. I'll attach it to it. I, I want to know where we are wrong. I want to know where I'm wrong. I want to know why is it that these are not the answers when the evil just simply will not stop. The agitation won't stop. The killing and the murdering won't stop. Who going to police the police? Answers? Anyone? Sure would be nice for us to have a civil and intelligent discussion. See, you ever know. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm known on the internet. Yes, I am too. I'm well known on the internet. And people choose, some people choose to ignore me, but I am known. But you don't see them invite me on these TV shows. You don't see me invite me to the, you don't see them invite me to their town hall discussions. You know why? Because they don't want to hear what I got to say. Because what I'm going to say is going to be actual, factual, and brutally honest, and painfully truthful. What saith you?